Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we're going to do something I've thought about for quite some time, but I'm incredibly glad that I've never considered doing until now, which is examining some of the most infamous figures in the history of the series by taking a look at the top 10 highest known bounties in One Piece. So the issue I've encountered up until now is that a video like this has limited shelf life because bounties are an ever evolving thing. And also this is what a whole ton of other YouTube channels focus on in an ungodly manner, just continuously making clickbait bounty videos. So why have I decided to make a clickbaity bounty video? Well, to be honest, it's quite spoilery for you anime only watchers, as well as for those of you not caught up with the manga. But essentially a very recent chapter has very much revolutionized the way we look at bounties in the series and forever going forward. And as a channel that claims to be your source for everything One Piece, I simply cannot ignore this topic any longer. Therefore, I believe that while bounties are bound to continue changing in the future, there really has never been a better time in the series to highlight the most profoundly valuable pirates. As a result, this video is going to contain manga spoilers. I'm really sorry, but there's absolutely no way around it. All I can say is that if you're not a manga reader, my God, get on that, because this is some pretty incredible discussion. So much so that I've had to extend this into a rare top 10 list. But the criteria for this list is going to be much more simple than most. So much so that I really do think it does go without explanation. Although I do want to add the caveat that these are the top 10 highest known bounties as of October 2019, for those of you who may be watching in the glorious, glorious future. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into it. Welcome to the top 10 highest known bounties in One Piece. Number 10, Jack the Drought. So we're commencing this list with an all-star of one of the Emperors of the Sea, and a man who, when he was first introduced into the series, completely shattered our expectations of bounties at the time. And that's because Jack here happens to be worth a round and humble one billion berries. And to put that into some perspective, at the time of Jack's introduction, Luffy was worth exactly half that, and 500 million berries was still considered one of the highest known bounties in the series. Then came Jack, and it's not hard to see why he immediately shattered that ceiling, as he possesses ridiculous raw power, but more importantly, a truly vicious personality to make use of it. In fact, on the one occasion where he was asked to sit down and have a civil discussion, Jack's response was a very simple, speak peacefully, I refuse. And that was then followed by a five day battle on the island of Zoe, where Jack more or less single handedly combated the forces of both Inuarashi and Nekomamushi as they continuously tag teamed him, demonstrating that Jack is a force to be reckoned with in this world. Although the sad thing about Jack is that this is likely to be the one and only time he's going to appear on a list like this, as he has the rather unfortunate number 10 spot and we have a lot of bounties left to reveal, at least one of which comes from his very own crew. However, at this point in time, Jack the Drought is worth a whopping 1 billion berries and that is how we are going to kick things off today. Number nine. Charlotte Katakuri. Moving on to the chief sweet commander himself and one of my personal favorite characters within the series, we have the staggering power that is Katakuri. Weighing in at a hefty 1 billion and 57 million berries, I have to say it's very clear that this man is worth every last drop of that cash. Apart from Big Mom herself, Katakuri is by far the most formidable presence within the Big Mom Pirates. And prior to Monkey D. Luffy's infiltration of Totland, he was thought to be something of a perfect being, completely undefeated in the realm of combat. And that makes a lot of sense as he is a proficient wielder of all three types of haki, a factor that will, crazily enough, be incredibly common on this list. But what sets Katakuri apart is his particular brand of observation haki, which has been honed to the point where it allows him to briefly see into the future. In addition to this, he is also the only user of a special paramecia fruit known in the series at this point in time, and also possesses base strength, speed, and endurance of truly insane capacity. Fun fact though, you might think the 57 million berry portion of Katakuri's bounty is a bit arbitrary. However, it is more than likely a reference to him being superior to Luffy in every way, as Luffy's common number is 56, which can be read as Gomu in Japanese. So as a result, to trump Luffy, Katakuri would need to have a 57. Makes sense, really. What makes less sense is the fact that Katakuri is appearing so far down on this list, meaning that we've got some truly terrifying figures to examine next. Number eight, Queen the Plague. Here we have another calamity of the Beast Pirates, except this time we have a threat deemed worthy of 1 billion 320 million berries. So Queen is well known for his expertise in engineering and chemistry, which has led him to the rather horrifying hobby of crafting highly infectious and wildly deadly viruses. But aside from the literal plague he casts upon the world, Queen is ridiculously powerful in his own right, with strength and speed capable of lazily outclassing basic attacks from Luffy, as well as an ancient Zoan type devil fruit that allows him to transform into a Brachiosaurus. And this is where Queen would truly earn his money, as in this form, he was able to temporarily subdue an amnesiac Big Mom. And yes, while she was not anywhere near peak condition and she may very well have fallen asleep rather than being knocked out, we're still not going to take that away from Queen because it is still quite a fine achievement to have gotten the better of one of the four emperors at all. And so Queen more than earns his value here today. Number seven, 
Monkey D. Luffy. All right, we should be pretty familiar with the 1.5 billion berry bounty on this man here. Unless, of course, you're watching with no knowledge of One Piece whatsoever. In which case, here's a quick breakdown. Luffy is an infamous member of the worst generation who has caused untold chaos throughout the world, as well as having saved many, many kingdoms and developed a following large enough to be considered the fifth emperor of the sea. In terms of strength, he is no joke. However, honestly, he may seem a bit out of place here with these figures if we're just talking about pure power. That really isn't where Luffy shines though, because it is his drive and determination that manages to overcome whatever obstacle is in his way. For example, he managed to defeat the number nine contender on this list, Shala Katakuri, despite being weaker, slower, inferior in regards to Haki, and having a devil fruit completely outmatched by Katakuri's own. So how did he win? Well, I have a whole video discussing that, but suffice to say, Luffy has some incredibly unique talents. So much so that he boldly claims that he will one day become the Pirate King, and I have never once doubted those words. By the end of the series, Luffy may even be able to top this list, but for now, we still have a pretty long journey ahead, because from here, these bounty numbers are going to get pretty damn insane, Pretty damn quickly. Number six, Marshall D. Teach. All right, we are taking a big step here and featuring another member of the worst generation and a man who is quite possibly going to be the final antagonist of the series. Currently valued at a whopping 2,247,600,000 berries, an absolute mouthful of bounty, but it's hard to argue with such a high number. In fact, it's almost shocking that it isn't higher given that he is one of the emperors of the sea, a former warlord of the sea, engineered the escape of the level six prisoners of Impel Down, and not only landed the killing blow on the strongest man in the world, but proceeded to become the first person person in the series as we know it, capable of wielding two devil fruit powers. One of which is the Ami Ami no Mi, considered to be the most evil fruit in the world, whilst the other, the Goro Goro no Mi, has the power to quite literally destroy the world. But not only that, Blackbeard has also managed to gather a mighty legion helmed by his 10 Titanic captains. And furthermore, Blackbeard is also so infamous that he even has a former Marine Admiral working with him. And that last part is something that absolutely nobody else on this list can boast. And somehow, we're still only halfway through here. Number five. Redhead Shanks. Moving on to Luffy's mentor and a former member of the Roger Pirates, here we have our first truly staggering bounty, clocking in at 4,048,900,000 berries. Now Shanks is quite the mysterious living legend. However, despite the very, very minute information we know about him, every detail we do receive is rather world shaking. Sometimes quite literally, such as when he clashed with Whitebeard and caused the sky to split open. In fact, his power is incredibly impressive in general, given that he is the first figure to appear on this list who is not confirmed to be a Devil Fruit user. Everything about this man is 100% raw shanks. Nothing is off limits for this fiery redhead, as he is a man who can casually stroll into the holy land of Marijuana as one of the most infamous pirates in the world to have a chat with Gorosei. And at the same time, he's also the kind of guy that can step foot onto a battlefield between two of the greatest and most powerful factions that this world has ever seen and calmly state that he is here to end the war. And you know what happened? That war ended immediately. There is something about shanks that demands the respect of the world and that is well reflected in his bounty. Number four, Charlotte Lin Lin. And here is a figure in the world who commands fear like no other. Honestly, Charlotte Linlin's monetary value of 4,388,000,000 berries barely describes what this woman is capable of, in my opinion. To put things into some perspective, Linlin was born abnormally strong, to the point where she was capable of combating and killing giants at the tender age of five years old. Moving into adulthood, there is very little in this world that can equal her physical prowess. Now, she is nigh on invincible due to her natural state, but she has also mastered all three types of Haki. And on top of that, she acquired one of the most alarming devil fruits within in the entire series, the Soro Soro no Mi, paramecia type fruit that allows its user to manipulate the souls of others, as well as themselves, but others is what we're really focused on. Although her true element of fear comes from the fact that she will, very commonly, erupt into hunger tantrums, using all of her established powers to wreak havoc and kill indiscriminately until Lin Lin receives the food she desires. Without a doubt, the strongest woman in the world, and more than likely, the current strongest human in the world, period. However, there are at least three individuals whom the world government have considered more of a danger than Lin Lin. Number three, Kaido. So there is very little in this world capable of matching the sheer physicality of Charlotte Lin Lin, but here is one of those very rare existences. In fact, recently in the manga, we received first-hand evidence of their power in contrast to one another, resulting in a stalemate and another sky-splitting moment. However, sitting at a ridiculous 4,611,100,000 berries, Kaido has been deemed as more of a threat to the world. Now, why is that? Well, Kaido is a creature who is essentially unkillable. During his life as a pirate, Kaido has been defeated seven times and captured 18 times. From here, he has been subject to torture and sentenced to death 
40 times. But no method of execution produced so much as a scratch on Kaido. His durability is so extreme that Kaido can jump off a sky island and land 10,000 meters later onto the ground and emerge with but a mere headache. Oh, and he can also become a giant dragon and defeat Gear 4 Luffy with a single strike. Kaido is impossibly powerful and disturbingly volatile. Also, unlike Lin Lin, whose dream is to unite the races of the world in her own twisted manner, Kaido desires only to plunge the entire world into war. And you know what? He has the power to do just that. Number two, Edward Newgate. Breaking an inconceivable barrier here, I now present to you the strongest man in the world, also known as Whitebeard, and being worth a preposterous 5 billion and 46 million berries. As with most figures on the upper half of this list though, it's hard to argue with that number, especially given everything we've seen of Whitebeard. And to be clear, we've not even seen this man in his prime. During the Marine Fidak, he was 72 years of age and in very poor health. And yet he was still unequivocally the most dangerous presence in the Paramount War. And when we're talking about a conflict that features figures like the Marine Admirals or the Warlords of the Sea, that's not a light statement to make. However, Whitebeard was capable of handing all of their asses to them, having made a specific example of then Admiral Akainu. Through his sheer strength and devil fruit, which has already been mentioned on this list, but it was the Gura Gura no Mi, which once again held the potential to quite literally destroy the world. And even when he was overcome in his old age by 267 sword wounds, 152 bullets, 46 cannonballs, a laser beam to the chest, and a magma fist blowing off a third of his head, Whitebeard passed away standing tall without a single wound or scar on his back. As during his entire pirate career, he had never once run away. That is the kind of person worth 5 billion berries. So who is the only confirmed individual in this world who trumps this? Number one. Goal D. Roger. Here at long last, the former Pirate King himself revealed to have a bounty of 5,564,800,000 berries. So what can one man possibly do to be worth this much? Well, a good start would be by being the captain of the only known crew to have set foot on Raftel, resulting in him becoming the Pirate King, a feat so impressive that it is believed impossible to achieve by the vast majority of the world. However, in order to get there, Roger made quite a lot of enemies, one of which being the hero of the Marines, Monkey D. Garp, who was quite possibly the most powerful Marine to have ever existed, and even he was incapable of capturing Roger, despite having cornered him on many occasions. Roger's exploits certainly do not end there though, as he also made enemies of Big Mom, Kaido, and Whitebeard. Simultaneously, mind you, as all three of them were part of the same pirate crew back in the day, and Roger actually teamed up with Garp to defeat them. But oddly enough, Roger's most infamous action in this world was his death, a voluntary matter that sparked the Great Age of Piracy and the long-standing race to become the next pirate king. And you know what? Compared to that, five and a half billion doesn't seem like it was anywhere near enough to cover his legacy. And that pretty much does it for the top 10 highest bounties in One Piece. Keep in mind that this is likely to change fairly frequently as the years, perhaps even weeks and months go on, but I do feel like it was important to finally touch on this. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all the amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on these absurd numbers. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.